Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be comparing uh, two of the top radar detectors on the market. We're gonna be comparing the Valentine 1 and the Escort Max 360. Uh, these two detectors uh, are very, very similar. They're gonna be direct competitors. The V1 has been out for a long time, almost 30 years now. And uh, now that their patent has expired on the Arrows, Escort has basically copied them and they've brought Arrows over to uh, the Max 360 as well. Uh, it's basically the predecessor to their previous like best-selling detector, the Escort Passport Max 2. Uh, they gave it a rear antenna, they've added arrows, and they basically duplicated a lot of the stuff that you've got in the V1, um, while also bringing over a lot of the stuff from the Max 2 that makes it really easy to use plug and play. Uh, it's got a lot of features that the Valentine 1 doesn't. So what we're gonna be doing in uh, this video is basically doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the two detectors, so you can figure out which one is better, uh, which one you should buy, and and what's a better overall package. Now there's actually two different ways that we can discuss the V1. Uh, the first way is to look at just the V1 itself, like you buy it from the factory, uh, it turns out a lot of people just buy the V1, they put it on their windshield, they never customize it, change any of the settings, they leave it at factory defaults, and they just run it as is. So there's a stock V1 that you can run. There's also, if you take the time to learn all the different possibilities, how to customize it, program it, etc., you can basically bring all of the features of the Max 360 over to the V1. Uh, it's going to be it's going to require more things. It's going to require a cell phone. It's going to require third-party apps, etc. But that's going to be more of like a head-to-head -head comparison if we add on the other accessories and apps. So we can compare, you know, the stock V1 to the Max 360, or we can also add in um, the other accessories and options to the V1 to make it a more uh, close comparison. So we're actually going to be comparing all three versions of uh, these detectors. We've got the Max 360, we've got a stock V1, and we've got a V1 paired with the other apps. So. Let's take a look here at what we've got here on screen. Uh, we've got the V1 here right in the center. On the right, we have the Escort Passport Max 360, or I guess just the Max 360. I think they dropped the word Passport. Over here on the left, we have uh, the Android app Yavi 1. Uh, this app has... Uh, Basically, combining this app with the V1 is going to give us a lot of the same capabilities that we have here on the Max. For example, uh, the Max detectors have a GPS chip built in. This one does not uh, when the V1. And so... If you add in the GPS chip, it's going to give you a bunch of really cool functionality. You can see right here on the display, we have our speed. When we're driving around, it tells us how fast we're going. There's also a bunch of good uh, filtering options, thanks to the GPS chip, that uh, help us reduce a lot of the false alerts that we're going to get. For example, uh, you can actually learn where your false alerts are and actually tell the detector, hey, this is a false alert. Don't ignore or don't alert me to this in the future. Uh, that's really nice for helping, you know get rid of a lot of the same false alerts that you're going to encounter every single day. The V1 can't do that. And uh, if you pair it with Yavi 1, the app, uh, you'll be able to go ahead and tell it, hey, this is a false alert, ignore it over time. Uh, same thing, you've also got things like low speed muting. There's a couple different ways of doing that with the V1, actually with and without the app. And uh, you can also get things like red light camera alerts. So if you're driving around in town and you have red light cameras, uh, the Max 360 can alert you to them, the V1 cannot. However, if you run the app Waze, it's a free app, um, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, everything, uh, you can run that app and that will also alert you to the red light camera. So you can basically do a lot of the same stuff that the Max 360 can do as long as you take the time to piecemeal all the different bits and bobs together and get them all set up and working together. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about now the individual aspects of the different detectors. We've got uh, performance, false alert filtering, what features are included, how easy they are to use and set up, uh, all that kind of stuff, right? So we'll go ahead and start with uh, performance because that's going to be one of the main uh, and important things. Uh, when it comes to radar detection, there's well, I guess there's two ways that we can run the V1. Again, we can run it in factory defaults, or we can take the time to uh, uh, disable KA Guard and set up custom sweeps. Uh, I've got tutorials on my channel for all this kind of stuff. Uh, basically, the idea is we can actually uh, enhance the performance of the V1 and really maximize its capability. If we do that, uh, we're going to get a much better performing detector than what we've got with factory defaults. That can be done um, through the phone. It does require a phone in order to get custom sweeps. Uh, you can do that Android or iOS. Either one works. Once you do that, you're going to be having the best performing V1 possible. And uh, the Max 360 is going to be very similar to a custom swept V1. Uh, you know, I haven't actually seen too many tests done with a stock V1 versus uh, a stock Max 360. Those tests haven't been done in a while, so I'm kind of curious, actually, how that would perform. Um, the Max 360 may actually edge out, and it should be faster to alert than a stock V1. Uh, a custom programmed V1 is going to actually have the edge in performance slightly, and is also going to be a little bit faster alerting. But both of them are actually going to be pretty similar at the end of the day. Range is going to be pretty comparable. Maybe one will have the edge here and there. 
Um, in terms of reaction time, both of them are very fast detectors to alert. So in terms of radar detection, both of them are actually quite good. Uh, laser detection, here's where we'll see one of the differences. The V1 is gonna be the best laser detector you can get on any radar detector. It's extremely sensitive, it's fantastic. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't actually have a ton of filtering, so you also will get quite a few false alerts on laser. Uh, it's for that reason that even though the V1 is very sensitive on laser, I just turn laser off altogether and I let my laser jammers handle everything. And that's kind of what it boils down to is like laser detection, we can get into the nuances, like uh, the Max may not have as good of a laser receiver, but it doesn't really matter because a laser detector on a radar detector is basically just a ticket notifier. It says, hey, congratulations, you just got shot. Not too helpful. You don't get any warning ahead of time. As opposed to laser jammers, you can actually, uh, you know, prevent the gun from getting a reading, slow down, turn your jammers off, and you're good to go. So different than a radar detector. So we can get into the nuances and say the V1 is technically better at sensitivity, but maybe the filtering isn't as good. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter too much. Get a good set of jammers like the ALPs, and you're set. So that's uh, radar detection and laser detection. Uh, let's talk next about uh, false alert filtering. This is an area where we'll see some differences. Uh, the V1 has a good blind spot filter. That's There's a number of different sources of false alerts. Let's start with uh, one of the most annoying ones, which is uh, cars that have collision avoidance systems and blind spot monitoring systems. A lot of those are radar based and they can be tough to filter out, some of them more than others. Uh, no detector can completely filter them out. I wish there was one, but there really isn't. No detector can completely filter them out, but the false alert filter on the V1 is quite good. It's actually one of the best in the industry. Uh, as of the latest version of the V1, 3.894 or newer, they've called it the Junk K-Fighter. That version specifically, the latest and greatest one, has a really good false filter. Um, the one on the Max 360 has actually been improved over the previous Gen Maxes, the Max 2 and before, and all their other detectors. The reason is the detector has a uh, an improved DSP chip inside, which allows it to do a number of things. And actually, we'll talk about performance after this as well, because this will tie back into the DSP. Uh, the DSP on the Max 360 allows it to scan super, super quickly and do a bunch of really cool things. Uh, by scanning really quick and doing a little bit more analysis, it's able to recognize, hey, this is a false alert, filter it out. Now, the way the V1 does that, uh, one of the aspects of the way it filters it is it actually uh, implements a bit of a delay, and it says if the um, signal is really, really short in duration, just filter it out, chances are it's going to be a false alert. Uh, it has to pass a certain length threshold to say if it's a uh, if it's a longer signal, go ahead and alert to it. Now, doing this, you're going to have some performance penalties. You're going to get uh, slower reaction time, you're going to be potentially missing any briefer alerts, and you're going to get reduced uh, long distance range with the V1 if you enable their uh, K-band false alert filter. We call it TMF2 or the Junk K-Fighter. Uh, the Max 360 has the ability to filter out a lot of these falses without actually introducing that same penalty. Um, on the Escort products, they call it TSR, traffic sensor rejection. Valentine, they call it TMF, traffic monitor filter. Similar idea. Uh, with the Escort, you're going to have the ability now with the Max 360 to actually filter out a lot of those alerts without having to... Uh, turn on kind of the range killing filters of TSR and TMF, which is really awesome. So you now have the ability to filter out a lot of them without having to like kind of kneecap your performance, which is really awesome. Um, is that a big deal in some situations? Yeah, in some situations, not so much. Uh, with the V1, I actually have different profiles set up to where I can go ahead and just switch profiles on the fly and say, uh, go ahead and load in different settings and disable the filter or enable the filter accordingly. Uh, in town, I'll usually have it running. Um, in more rural areas, uh, if I know the falsing is reduced and I don't necessarily need the filter as much and I want maximum performance, I'll just turn the filter off. On the uh, Max 360, you don't necessarily have to make that compromise. Uh, you can still enable TSR, and it does help a little bit more to a certain extent, um, but it kind of changes the way the alerts arise are a little bit more of like intense right off the bat. And um, that's kind of now more geared to actually filtering out if you've got uh, traffic sensors in the area. So uh, which one is better? It's tough to say which one is more effective yet. I know the V1s is pretty good. I've been driving around with the 360 for about, I don't know, month and a half, two months, something like that now. And uh, they both do seem to do a pretty good job. Neither one is perfect. The both will still false, and it's tough to say, well, this one would have filtered that car out and another one doesn't. So it's really tough to pinpoint and say which one is better. Um, but they do seem to be both pretty decent. I can't unfortunately say which one is better yet. Um, but they do have different implementations. The Max 360 doesn't have the same, you know, performance penalties of TSR that you do have with the V1 with TMF2. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing, GPS lockouts. 
This is an area where you will see a difference here between the two detectors. Uh, the way they implemented this filter is very different. The idea behind GPS lockouts is as you're driving around, you're going to be encountering uh, a lot of the same false alerts every time. Uh, there'll be, you know, things, speed, sti speed signs, grocery stores, drug stores, uh, anything that have those automatic door openers. If it's the same frequency signal in the same location every time you drive past, the radar detector can actually learn that false alert and then say, hey, I've seen this before. I know this is not a legitimate signal. Just mute it. Very handy. The V1 and the MAX360 do this differently. Uh, with the MAX360, it's all integrated into the detector. Because the detector actually has a GPS chip built into it, um, you don't need anything else in order for this feature to work. You can just plug it in, put it on your windshield, and it begins working right out of the box. Super easy. With the V1, the uh, feature is not available in the detector because the detector does not have GPS. In fact, Mike V, the uh, creator of the Valentine products, you know, Mike Valentine, he's pretty adamant against this feature because of the possibility of actually locking out a legitimate police radar alert. And that's a real possibility. It's happened to me a couple times, and it's one of the reasons why, depending on where I drive, I may not necessarily trust the escort implementation of the uh, lockouts as much as I trust the Valentine one. And let me talk a little bit about why this is. The way that it works uh, with the escort ones is it basically says, um, if you see a certain frequency signal in a certain location, I want you to ignore not only this signal, but every single signal that matches this sort of fingerprint, the same frequency in this same location. Uh, with the Valentine one, it actually keeps track with the Avi one of how many signals there are. And it says, okay, I've, I've learned that there's two false alerts in this area. If I see a third one, even if it's the same frequency signal, alert to it because it's a new signal. It's a more advanced and sophisticated implementation of GPS lockouts, and because of that, it's safer. The trade-off is that it's noisier. It takes longer to learn the false alerts because it's doing more analysis. Uh, there's times when you may drive past an area where you've had lockouts created, and it will alert to it anyways because of the kind of tighter tolerances on the way the lockout filter has been implemented. So you're going to be getting more false alerts. It's going to be noisier and chattier. The Escort product errs on the side of silence. The Valentine version errs on the side of chattiness and noise. Which one is better? Kind of depends. The Valentine version is safer. Drive around enough, give it enough time to you know, lock out your false alerts and it's going to do a great job with less risk. That's the main thing that I like about it. In areas where I live, and uh, um, I don't live there anymore, but uh, there was an area where we had low-powered radar guns, K-band guns, in use right by grocery stores, which meant, you know, you could see the K-band uh, alert from the grocery store and think, oh yeah, it's just the same store, but it's actually a K-band police officer sitting right next to it, which could be very dangerous. That's why I like a detector that can do a little bit better job of actually recognizing and filtering out versus you know alerting to these signals it's very important so that's one of the things i like about uh yavi one's implementation of gps lockouts it is safer it's a little bit noisier my preference is to have them safer and let it you know learn them over time but at the same time one little nuance um actually let's do this real quick i'll go ahead and fire up a k-band gun and uh, we'll do a lockout manually. Um, both detectors can do it here automatically. Most detectors can't, but these ones uh, actually can do it manually. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me show you the process. Okay. So what we're gonna do with the escort one, we're just gonna lock out the signal like that, and now you'll see it's actually grayed out. Um, this guy is also muted just because I'm at low speed and I have some extra filtering stuff. But as you can see right here, I have my signal actually locked out. It's gray. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold on the screen and the um, button pops up and we just press lockout. And now I have some different colors set up and actually lets me know like, hey, this signal uh, has been locked out before. And so, you know, you can customize everything here, but that's the way that the lockouts actually work. If you want to unlock out a signal, the way that that works is we can do that or you can press here and unlock and goes away. Cool. So that's the process of locking a signal out and then unlocking it right there. So it's a little bit different in terms of button presses. Uh, I like that on this detector, um, you can do it right on the detector. On the V1, you can't do it from the detector. You can only do it from the phone. Uh, I do have some low speed muting right now, so you're not going to be able to actually hear this. I can't quite demonstrate it. But one of the nice things that I do like about the escort lock lockouts, remember how I mentioned they're quieter? Uh, one nice thing is that... Uh, the lockout will actually happen immediately when you first see that signal. What I mean by that is uh, with the V1, because it's running off an app and it's not a native thing, there's a little bit of time that it takes from the V1 sees the signal, it sends it over to the phone, the phone does some extra analysis and processing and says, hey, this is a locked out signal. 
go ahead and mute yourself and don't alert to it. it. Takes a little bit of time to go through that process. And what happens is when you get the alert initially, while this detector is, you know, they're doing the communication and processing, you'll get an alert here initially. And then on kind of the second alert, uh, the detector will be muted. So for that reason, you're gonna get an alert initially, even on a locked out signal, and then it'll go quiet. As opposed to the Max 360, which everything is all integrated here in one package, it does all of the processing right when it does the initial alert, and it says, as soon as I see the signal, just go ahead and mute it initially. Don't give me a beep and then figure it out. So uh, again, the Max 360 is gonna be a little bit quieter. That's one of the nice things about it. Um, it errs on the side of quietness. And if you don't necessarily want the extra chattiness, that's something nice about the 360. Um, Another thing is the way that it works, uh, well, I'll do it again here real quick. Uh, one thing is that with the V1, you can't actually turn off all the lights and everything. Like, let's do this lockout again. Oops, it went away. But basically what happens here, lockout. Uh, when a signal is locked out here on Yavi 1, it'll still display here on the V1. And so um, over here on the Max 360, when you get a locked out alert, it'll display, but it's going to be grayed out. Gray is not very attention grabbing. It just kind of sits in the background quietly. You don't get as many beeps and it's less uh, attention grabbing, which is awesome. So I like um, when I want a quieter experience, just a more chill experience. I don't want to focus on all the radar detection stuff. I'll grab the Max 360. Um, if I want a more sophisticated experience, especially if I'm in an area where I know uh, K-Band is in use and I really want, uh, I'll even use a little bit more brain power to kind of analyze what's going on and the way that I'll do that is when I see a signal, um, right here on screen, I can be tracking multiple signals. I can track the signal strength, the frequency, I can track everything going on here on the detector, um, which is very, very handy. So I can actually see everything that's going on for every single signal. I can see the frequency, the strength, the direction, everything. I can see everything that's going on. And so um, if the detector accidentally mutes out a signal, at least I'm sitting here like watching the blinking lights and frequencies and everything. And I can figure out, hey, something a little bit different is going on. I need to pay attention. Whereas on the Escort product, you do run a little bit more of a risk. If it just says, hey, I'm gonna mute it, it doesn't show you as much information. It doesn't present as much information. So it kind of relies more on the detector. Whereas the V1 gives you more information. So you can use some extra brain power to figure things out as needed so I do like that so that's kind of where the differences start to come out is like the v1 you do have more control more very useful information which can really come in handy in practice whereas the max you just kind of let it do more by itself so um, also other things like low speed muting uh, differences there the Max 360 does it all with GPS. So there's a feature called Cruise Alert, and what it does is um, you just set it and you say, if I'm traveling below a certain speed, just go ahead and give me two beeps and then drop the volume and mute it. Uh, very nice for around town to keep the volume muted. Uh, you can do the same thing here with uh, the V1. It's called Savvy Emulation. Uh, Savvy is uh, an accessory that you can buy from Valentine. It's a little box that plugs into your car's OBD2 port and then plugs into the V1 and says, uh, you just have a little dial on it and um, anytime you're traveling below speed, it'll go ahead and mute your signals for you. Very nice. Uh, one thing that I do like about Savvy actually is it doesn't require GPS. Uh, I've got parking decks here where I drive and if I'm in the parking deck I can't get a GPS lock and there's K-band sensors in there so what happens is all my GPS based detectors will alert in there and I have no way of muting them at all because everything uses GPS with Savvy I can still mute the detector even a parking deck which is kind of nice now with Yavi 1 if you don't want to buy Savvy and spend the extra money for it you can use Savvy emulation which requires GPS just like the Max 360 uh, it's right here in the detector um, you just enable the feature you set whatever speed you want and then when you're traveling below the speed it mutes the V1 very handy for keeping the detector quieter around town love that feature so as you can see um, very similar features sometimes there's little nuances and differences in the implementation but uh, you have a lot of the same features here um, again if you've got uh, just the stock v1 you're not going to have a lot of the stuff like the lockouts uh, the savvy emulation you can get regular savvy which plugs right into the v1 and that works fine um, you do get the blind spot filter in both of them but you don't get everything that you have here with the max 360 unless you also add yavi one to the package so little differences there Let's talk about some of the false alerts that you'll get on KA band with the two different detectors. Uh, they'll both false on KA band, but for different reasons. With the uh, V1, you're going to be getting some Cobra falses. If you set your detector up with custom sweeps and turn off KA guard to get maximum performance, you are going to be getting some false alerts from Cobras in the area and other poorly designed leaky radar detectors. Those detectors emit some frequencies, which can cause other nearby radar detectors to alert to KA band. Now, one of the little nuances about the V1 is if you set it up for maximum 
and performance, you can't actually disable the sweeps in the 33.6, 33.7, 33.8 range. Uh, you're not going to get legitimate police radar around 33.6. You're only going to get false alerts. On some detectors like the red line, for example, you can actually disable that frequency range altogether and avoid the false alerts that you'll get. With the V1, you can't do that. It's going to always sweep that frequency range pretty much no matter what you do. So really the only solution, it's kind of a band-aid. In Yavi 1, you can set up a box and say, if you see a signal in this frequency range, uh, just mute the audio. So you can mute it, but you can't prevent the alert from happening in the first place or stop it from showing up on the V1. So it's kind of an issue. I wish Valentine would let us turn off that frequency range or something, but uh, we can't actually do it with custom sweeps. Even if you have no 33.8 sweep, it will still sweep that range. So the only solution is to pretty much mute it with Yavi 1 or something. With the Max 360, uh, it has a different issue. Because RDR is built in and the way it sweeps, uh, it has the KA filter, which is really nice, so you're not going to have to deal with the Cobra falses that you'll get with some of the other detectors. However, uh, there's an issue that they've had since the original Max, which is where uh, when you get near certain K-band sources, it's historically been like Chevy vehicles, uh, the detector will misreport K-band signals as K-A-band signals, and it'll, it'll bounce kind of back and forth between K-band and like 33.676 or so. This was an issue in the Max. Uh, the bug carried over into the Max 2. Um, they tried to fix it a little bit in the Max 360. It no longer falls to the, in the same way with the Max 360, but now it actually uh, does the same thing, and it falses at like 33.4. So they tried to fix the issue with the 360. They didn't. Um, I've also seen some 33.6 falsing with the, with the Max 360. So it too will also false. Um, it's a little bit more annoying. In my experience, I get quite a few more falses from the 360. Additionally, if you pair it with Escort Live, what's going to happen is you're going to get that KA alert. It's going to automatically be reported through your phone to the cloud to everybody else. And now everybody else is going to have to deal with your false alerts too, not just you. So it's a little bit more annoying just due to uh, its... Number one, an incorrect false. It shouldn't be happening. It's a technical glitch. Number two, it's going to um, false to other people. And number three, it's like a bug that's been carried over from generation to generation of the Max. So I really wish Escort would fix it. Uh, they don't have band segmentation available for the Maxes. They don't need it for performance reasons the way they do with some of the other detectors. But if they had the feature, at least they would allow us to turn off uh, that frequency range. You're never, ever going to see legitimate police radar ever at 33.4. So it would be nice if they just said, okay, we're having trouble fixing this bug and actually preventing these alerts from happening. Okay, if you're having trouble fixing it, at least just turn off the frequency range and don't alert or give us the option or something, you know? That way we don't have to deal with these false alerts. Because we're relying more on Escort to do this stuff for, uh, instead of us, um, there's really nothing that we can do to prevent this. Uh, this issue is just going to happen. So with the Max 360, a lot of times when you pass K-band sources, again, not necessarily the same ones as what we saw with the Max 2, but it happens anyways. Uh, some of the K-band sources will get incorrectly reported as 33.4-ish. A bunch of people have been reporting the same issue it's pretty common and known at this point and uh, there's really no fix for it available currently so uh, that is also kind of an annoyance and uh, I feel like my hands are tied a little bit because there's nothing I can do um, and there's such obvious fixes either okay fix the technological issues whatever the cause is first and foremost would be great or if you can't do that at least let us turn off the frequency range but we don't have that ability with the Max 360. So uh, they both false to KA. Max 360 will do it more, and it's more annoying. And this is kind of one of the big differences as well I've noticed between the two detectors in practice. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, let's actually talk about just the detectors themselves. Let's take a quick look at them and pop them off the mouse. So we've got the Max 360. We've got the V1. All right. Whoops. Unplugged it. So we've got the two side by side here. And actually, that's kind of handy. Unplug them. This way I can actually be a little bit more mobile. Uh, you'll see that the Max 360 is a bigger package. It's not like monumentally huge or anything to the point of absurdity, but it is a bigger detector than the V1. Um, if we compare them side by side, kind of stack them like this, you'll see it's also a little bit thicker package. Um, so there's more going on, and which that kind of makes sense. You know, the Max 360 has more stuff in it. It's got a GPS chip and a Bluetooth chip and all that kind of stuff where uh, the V1 does not. It relies on like an external Bluetooth module or your phone for GPS. So it doesn't have all the same, you know, hardware that the Max 360 does. Um, the mounts, actually let's talk about the mount too because they're two of my favorite mounts that you can get for radar detectors. I'll turn this off real quick. Uh, here's what I like about them. This one is really easy to adjust 
and set to different heights like this. So if you want it lower, you need to just kind of push it back and get it angled with the windshield to get it at just the right angles. You want it, you know, straight and level, not pointing off to the side or up and down. Like we're not trying to detect radar from the International Space Station here or down in China. Like have it straight and level, right? Super easy to do with the V1. It's also got uh, a little rubber pad right here. So it sits right against your windshield to um, help minimize any vibrations and just, you know, give you a nice like two point solid mount. So it's gripping it here from the side and uh, I really like the mount, very easy to use. It's one of my favorite mounts. Uh, the Max 360 uses a magnetic mount. So this is actually called a sticky cup. It's sticky right there and you can just, you know, pop it off, attach it on like that. And with this detector, it's pretty easy uh, to use. There used to be detectors where you had a button right here. You'd slide it on and uh, that's how you would connect it. It was kind of a pain because depending on your car and the rake of your windshield, if it was a very steep windshield, it's kind of tough to reach back here, press the button and pull the detector out. Uh, now that they have the magnetic mount, it's really easy to just pop on, take off like that. It's awesome, I love that feature. Uh, as far as the quality of the mounts, I have noticed some issues. Uh, let's actually talk a little bit about that as well. Um, we'll start with the V1. Uh, their suction cups, they work well, just like pretty much every other suction cup on the planet. They work great. Uh, over time, they will lose their suction ability as the suction cups get kind of flat, so you may need to replace them after a couple years. Mine are getting kind of old, and I'm probably going to need to replace them here, but they've been great for years. Max 360, it's a little bit different. Uh, let's pop it off the windshield here. It doesn't actually use a normal suction cup. It's kind of this rubberized material, and uh, it's actually sort of sticky too, hence the name Sticky Cup. The way it works, you just apply it under your windshield like this, put it in place, and then lock it in place, and now it's nice and secure, which is great. Uh, there are a couple issues with it. Number one, it can actually fall off your windshield, and the reason is uh, the sticky cup actually needs to be very clean. You can see mine's actually a little bit dirty. I need to clean it off, but if it gets dirty, um, it actually won't hold on, and it'll fall off along with your, you know, $600 radar detector, so that's not good. Um, it's really easy to clean, fortunately. You can actually just run it under water, like normal water, rinse it off, shake it dry and you know dry it off and then it's fine. Um, another issue that I've seen is, I've had a bunch of sticky cups, I've got like four or so. One of them has actually kind of exploded on me and what's happened is the, uh, the latch right here um, doesn't really hold in place and then uh, when you release it, there's a spring inside, this pops off, the spring like makes the whole thing explode and everything comes tumbling down. Um, I've only had this issue on one of my sticky cups, but a number of other people have been reporting this issue as well. So something to be aware of with the sticky cups is, um, Make sure that this latch stays in place and don't be too like crazy with it or anything. I mean, even mine, like I wasn't, you know, whatever. But it, yeah, it does have some build quality issues. Uh, there's also been some improvements with the newest version of the Sticky Cup. Uh, the older ones that were used with the uh, the Max and the Max 360. Uh, this right here kind of stuck out farther forward and there was more leverage against the mount, which meant that the detectors actually had uh, quite a bit of vibration when you were uh, running the detectors. Um, they actually bounced a lot, which was not good. Uh, they've improved that with the latest and greatest version of the Sticky Cup here on the Max 360, so they've solved uh, the bouncing issues. So really nice there. This new version of the Sticky Cup, other than some potential quality control issues with them falling apart, uh, the bounciness is better. Um, it's a great mount and it's super easy to mount and remove the detector. So I like both of them for different reasons. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the display of the detector. Um, as you can see, they do have two different styles of the display. Uh, this guy is going to be kind of, you know, it's an older design. They've been using the same design for a long time. It's a really very functional display. It's well engineered and it works great. Uh, the detector is also actually slightly angled. The display is angled towards the driver, which is great to make it more visible when you're driving, as opposed to most other detectors, which are just pointed straight. Not really too big of a deal in practice, but you know, a little differences there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, trigger, actually before we do that, before we trigger some alerts, um, over here we've got uh, a bunch of information, um, frequency, all this kind of stuff, but we don't have it here on the detector. As opposed to this guy, this guy has pretty much everything right here on the display. We're gonna have our speed limit right there. Um, if you have it paired with your cell phone and running the free, or the app Escort Live, um, yeah, subscription based, but they give it to people for free when you buy the detector. So you've got your speed limit there, you've got your traveling speed, you're going to have uh, signal strength and frequency on display right there, and you're going to have your arrows right here. Uh, let's go ahead and trigger an alert and just take a look at uh, what an alert looks like from both detectors. Cool. 
There you go. So that's what our alerts look like. You can see we've got uh, over here, we've got our frequency information, we've got our signal strength and our arrows. Uh, over here on the detector, we've got how many signals we've got, our signal strength, our band, and our arrows. Uh, with this guy, similar idea. We've got our frequency, uh, the signal it says up front, we can see front arrow. This setup is currently referring to the front antenna, and the one tells us that we've got currently one signal. Uh, don't worry about the arrows. I know one's pointing front, one's pointing back. Um, because I have the radar gun actually sitting here in the car with me, the signal's bouncing around everywhere. The arrows are not going to be accurate. I'll actually get into uh, arrow accuracy here in a bit. But uh, that's just a look at the uh, presentation of the alerts and how they differ. Uh, they obviously both have arrows. That's like the big thing that they've copied, right? So when you get an alert, you see we've got our, our arrows right there, and we've got our arrows right here. Now, uh, they do actually... Um, kind of work a little bit differently. You've got more options here. Uh, let me go ahead and fire up the app and, oh, uh, actually I'll go ahead and do this as well. You'll see when you get an alert uh, on the Escort product, it'll also tell you uh, right here on the phone, you know, if you want to like turn off the display here, you can use just this guy. Uh, just like if you wanted to, you could turn off the V1 display and run, you know, just this guy. So you've got some options there. Anyways, uh, what we've got is, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So, uh, with the MAX 360, we can actually go in and customize specifically our uh, arrow presentation. We've got a couple different ways of um, changing the alerts here on screen. So, if we want, we can have the detector display front and rear antenna. We can have frequency information. We can display, um, you know, a whole bunch of signals all at the same time. We can have a really simple alert um, just to have it say, slow down. We can have something really basic with just the frequency or just the signal strength. Um, so you can see we've got a whole bunch of different ways of having the alert here. Additionally, with the arrows, uh, we've got a bunch of different ways of displaying the arrows. We can display just one, we can display multiple signals. Uh, we've got, you know, different color combinations. So you can see all that. Boom, boom. So we've got a bunch of different ways of doing the color combinations with the screen. Uh, this guy, we can customize the colors. Where's all the colors? Display color. So we've got currently a red display. There's also amber, which is kind of this yellow orangey color. We've got green and we've got blue. So we have the option here of actually matching our car's interior. Uh, we can change a lot of the nuances in the alert presentation in terms of what it's telling us front to rear, uh, different arrow combinations. Um, you know, are the front always one color and the back a different color? Or is KA band always one color and maybe K band is a different color? Like you have a lot of control here over the alert presentation much more than you have here with the V1, which is pretty much just a red arrow. And if it's KA band or K band, it's kind of hard to tell because the only alert that you get is a little bitty dot right here on the detector and you can't really tell. If I trigger a K-band a K alert as well, you can see uh, we've got that one and we'll do both of them. So you can see we've got the two dots there. Here we've got some other information going on. But actually, let's unlock. There we go. So anyways, I know a bunch of stuff going on. Um, this guy, we have a lot of control. Basically, it'll tell us everything about every single signal. You can see we've got different colors, which are customizable, signal strength, arrows, all the information about every single signal. So if you want to maximize your level of situational awareness and understanding, this guy is going to tell you everything about every single signal. And that's something that I personally really, really like. I know not everybody wants to know that, that may be too, in, too much information, TMI. So if that's the case, you know, that's great, but you may not necessarily need it. You may just want something that, you know, automatically quiets stuff down for you and beeps if it thinks it's a legit signal. It does more things for you. We're here, it gives you the opportunity to do more things yourself. So it really kind of comes down to what sort of experience uh, you want to have, you know. Now next, let's talk about the accuracy and responsiveness of the arrows. Uh, this is an area where I do actually see a bit of a difference between the two detectors. Uh, Valentine has had arrows for a while. They've invented the feature and they've been refining it for nearly three decades now, so it works quite well. Um, Escort's been doing this for maybe two or three years now, ever since the patent expired in 2012. Uh, and I do see a difference in terms of the way the arrows work. Uh, both of them do work properly. If the source is in front of you, the arrow will point forward. If the threat's behind you, it'll point backwards. This is super helpful for when you pull on the highway and your detector goes off, you can tell if the signal's behind you or in front. You'll respond differently and that's very useful information to have. Now I do notice a difference uh, when you actually pass the radar source. With the V1 it's very good. As soon as you pass the source within a second or less, 
the arrows will actually flip from front to side to back. It's very useful to have arrows that are very responsive and accurate like that really helps you figure out, you know, the source that you just passed or was it, hey, that unmarked Crown Vic, was that actually the source of this radar? Or uh, passing a car with a blind spot monitoring system, when you see the arrows actually flip back, that helps you figure out that this weak signal you're picking up is from a blind spot car and not instant on up ahead, for example. So having very accurate and responsive arrows really does make a big difference in real life. With the Max 360, this is an area that I've noticed it's lacking in a bit. Uh, it does take a little bit of time once you pass the source for the arrows to flip front to back. On average, it's about four seconds or so I've noticed in testing. Uh, the longest times are sometimes like eight or nine seconds. So sometimes it can take quite a while. You pass a source, the source is behind you and the arrows are still pointing up ahead, which is kind of weird. It the whole point of arrows is to really maximize situational awareness and help understand what's going on around you. But if the arrows are pointing in the wrong direction, what good is that, you know? Uh, it's not a deal breaker. It's not necessarily a huge deal, but it can be kind of annoying in practice. Uh, I do really like actually the faster arrows. Um, Escort says the reason that their arrows are slower to alert is because they have to do more processing and they're trying to avoid the bounciness issues that we see with the V1. Uh, that issue is when we pass a source, uh, the arrows may sometimes bounce a little bit. They don't necessarily always go front to side to back. They may bounce front back, front back and then eventually go back. Uh, that happens due to reflections. When you get close to a source and it's very strong, it can be bouncing off of vehicles up ahead of you or behind, which can confuse the arrows a little bit and they'll get a little bit bouncy. Uh, the Max 360 is trying to avoid that. It does have uh, less bounciness than what I see with the V1 arrows. I have seen it bounce a little bit, but not nearly to the degree that the V1 does. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's never been an issue for me in practice. And you can tell if you get a little bit of bounciness, it just lets you know that you're close to the source and not a big deal. So I would prefer a little bit of bounciness over uh, a lag in the arrows, but that's just me. So that's one of the differences that I've noticed uh, between the Max and the 360, specifically their implementation of arrows. It does look like uh, V1's implementation is a little bit more refined and more effective, which kind of makes sense considering they've been doing it for such a long time. And Escort is a little bit new, a uh, little bit newer to the field when it comes to working with arrows. So the V1's arrows work better. Uh, the Max gives you a few more choices as far as the aesthetics and colors and look and feel of the arrows. Uh, under the hood though, the V1 is gonna have a little bit more refinement in terms of how it operates. And uh, with the exception maybe of the arrows, you do have more control over just kind of how things work under the hood itself. And actually on that note, that's also gonna be one of the main differences between the detector. Um, this guy, has the ability to you know customize the display and all, but you don't have a ton of control over like fine tuning the nuances of the detector. It does more automatically, but it does do actually a pretty good job automatically, so you don't necessarily need a ton of control. With this guy, it's kind of the difference between driving an automatic or a manual transmission. Like if you want to have the option and ability to really control your experience and do it all yourself, you can do that here. You can customize the way the detector sweeps, uh, the way it presents alerts. Um, you know, you can have different profiles built in. Uh, right here, if we take a look, oops, V1 settings, you can see I've got a bunch of different profiles all loaded in so I can switch between settings on the fly while I'm driving. Really easy. I don't have to actually go in here and change the settings. Um, so I do have more options here. Whereas this guy, I mean, yeah, you can change some settings, like you can change the sensitivity, for example, and there's buttons right here. So you can do more um, right here on the detector where this guy, you pretty much just have, you know, the volume dial right there. And that's kind of about it. So not as much that you can do here. It's kind of, again, more reliant on things like phones and accessories. Um, in terms of the volume, uh, actually the Max 360 has copied another one of the Valentine's features, and that is the way the detector works, it actually has two volume knobs. This one right here is going to be the main volume knob. On the outside of it, there's actually a secondary muted volume knob. This is going to be the volume of your main alerts. This is going to be the volume of your muted alerts. And so you get an alert, you press the button to mute it, and then the um, muting volume knob takes over. So you can actually fine tune how loud the normal alerts are and how loud the uh, the false or the muted alerts are. With the Max 360, we used to not have this option with the previous Gen Maxes. It was pretty much just alert and then either mute or the detector just kind of auto mutes it where it automatically just drops the volume down a little bit. We now have a couple different options as far as how far down it drops the volume. And so the auto mute now has a couple different settings. Um, if we go here into the settings, where is it? Auto mute. 
you can see we actually have uh, a couple different settings. You can disable auto mute or you can set it low, medium, and high, which allow you to actually fine tune how quiet the auto muted volume drops down, which is nice. So we do have a little bit more control um, like we do with the V1, but not quite to the same extent. So as you can see, they're copying a lot of the same features, um, but it's not to the same degree of uh, customizability and control, but you still do get you know far more improvement over what we saw with the previous gen detectors. Um, in terms of setup, this again will be a big difference. With this guy, it's pretty much just plug and play. You can take them out of the box, put them on your windshield, plug it in, and it's good to go out of the box. Um, you can totally customize it. You can change the colors, you can change um, you know, the alert presentation stuff, some of the little things about volume and whatnot. You can totally you know, customize and fine tune, but a lot of the stuff is more presentation and aesthetics. You know, Do you want a red display or does your car have blue lights? So you want to match your blue interior, you know? So it's a lot more of that stuff, whereas this guy, um, it needs actually a little bit more fine-tuned control because of the way it sweeps and uh, it gives you a lot more options. Let me give you a perfect example and it has to do with uh, KA Guard custom sweeps versus um, this guy's ability to scan super fast. Uh, this is a newer detector that has the ability to scan, um, again, thanks to its DSP chip, it can scan the entire range of frequencies super, super fast. It can scan it so fast, it can actually scan it a bunch of times, kind of average out uh, a bunch of signals to kind of average out a lot of the noise and help pick up weaker signals. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the longest range detector on the market, but it does kind of have some cool tricks up its sleeve to help give it longer performance in software. Um, again, it can't overcome the limitations that it has in hardware with the antenna, but it does have some software tweaks to help it give better performance. Now, one of the cool benefits additionally is that because it can sweep so fast, it doesn't actually need to turn off some frequencies in order to scan the actual frequencies really fast. And what I mean is with the normal detector like the red line, the V1, and pretty much all the previous gen detectors, uh, it took a little bit of time to scan the entire range of all KA frequencies. And uh, because of this, it kind of reduced the performance. So one of the cool tricks you could do with the detector is actually you just say, most of KA there's not actually going to be any legitimate police radar. Don't bother wasting your time scanning those frequencies. Just just only focus on the frequencies where I know police radar actually exists. And so you can actually scan a small segment of KA versus the whole thing. Um, with the Escort products, they call that feature band segmentation. You're, scan you're just segmenting the entire band into little segments and only scanning the ones you want. With the V1, they call that same feature custom sweeps. So you're customizing the sweeps of the detector. You can see I have my detector set up to only scan 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5, whereas this guy will scan the entire range. So uh, I do need to do some more like advanced programming uh, here with the V1. Additionally, you have more control over the way the sweeps are done. You may want to actually change the sweeps depending on where you live. For example, if you have no 35.5, you could actually you know, disable the 35.5 sweep and do maybe just 33.8 and 34.7 or whatever. So you do have more control to really kind of maximize and fine tune the performance. But at a certain point, I mean, you don't necessarily have to go too far and too fancy with this, but you do have the option here with the V1. With this guy, it scans everything super fast and you don't have to bother with any of that. Uh, a cool benefit of actually doing it this way is because it's scanning all of the frequencies, you don't actually run the risk of uh, segmenting out effectively uh, out of tune guns. And uh, the idea with out of tune guns is police radar guns are only supposed to shoot within a certain frequency range. Um, if they haven't been calibrated in a while, they may start to drift out of the uh, appropriate you know, transmission ranges. So like a detector that, or a radar gun that's supposed to transmit on 34.7, uh, they're actually allowed to transmit anywhere between 34.6 to 34.8. It's a range of plus minus 100 megahertz. However, some stalker guns actually do drift high or low. So they may transmit at 34.850. 34.550, kind of out of range. And if you segment your detector too tightly, you can actually run the risk of not being alerted to some of those out of tune guns. With this guy, because you're scanning the entire range, you don't actually have to worry about that risk. Um, it's pretty easy to account for. You just have you know wider sweeps to account for those guns. So it's not like it's a big deal or anything. But uh, with this guy, it's a much simpler process. You don't have to get into a lot of the technical nuances to really extract the maximum performance from the detector. It just kind of does everything on its own. That's again, kind of the appeal of the detector. More control, um, but you really need, you know, a lot of the more advanced stuff to get the most performance out of the detector, whereas this guy just kind of does it all out of the box. So as you can see, we have different approaches to the detector. Um, this guy is going to be just plug and play. It does it all really well. This guy gives you much more fine-tuned control and to really get the most out of it, you're going to want to customize the detector. And I think that's really kind of the main differences between these detectors. This guy is more plug and play. 
this guy is gonna require and give you the option of a lot more fine-tuned control. This guy does not have a lot of the features that this guy does. It does everything out of the box. It's very fast, it's got good range, um, it has the GPS chip, so you have your lockouts, you have the false alert filtering, you know, all that kind of stuff can happen over time, all automatically. Very handy. With the V1, you're going to have to pair it with a phone. It has to be an Android phone only. You can't get this feature with iOS. It has to be an Android phone. You run the app. You always have to have uh, the phone with you, the power cable, the phone mount if applicable, uh, the Bluetooth module. So you need a bunch of other stuff in order to get the feature, whereas this guy, you just turn it on and it works. You know, It's really nice. So while I prefer a lot of times the more advanced lockouts here, Sometimes I just want a simpler experience and it's pretty refreshing to just grab the 360 and stuff just works, you know? So I really like that. Um, another thing is, uh, what was I gonna say? Red light camera alerts. This detector has red light camera alerts built in, speed cameras, all that kind of stuff. You don't get it here. You actually don't get it in Yavi 1 either. Uh, what you can do is actually just run Waze here. Um, and what we can do is we'll just fire up Waze. Where is it? So when you're running Waze, uh, this can actually alert you to all the red light cameras as well, just like the Max 360. So you can run the app, and there you go. Uh, a cool thing about Yavi 1 is it actually integrates really well with Waze. If we get an alert, we'll actually get an overlay here on screen, and it shows us the frequency, the arrows, the signal strength, all that kind of stuff. If it's something that we want to take more, you know, a closer look at, oops, we'll just mute it. Um, we can actually just jump right into the app and we've got all our information here. So you can run ways to get, you know, your red light camera alerts, all that kind of stuff. And it integrates really nicely with Yavi 1 thanks to those background overlays. So uh, as you can see, we've got more stuff going on. We've got ways, we've got Yavi 1, we've got another Bluetooth module, we've got uh, customizability and setup and all this extra stuff here to do what this guy can do just on its own. So which one is better? That's really what it boils down to. What kind of experience do you want to have? Uh, are you comfortable with technology, with maybe getting a dedicated phone for your car, with setup? Do you like the idea of tweaking and tuning and fine tuning to get the best performance and really dialing in exactly the experience that you want? If so, the V1 may be a better choice. If you want something that's more plug and play and you're not too worried about the nuances of radar. You just want it to beep if it's real and stay quiet if it's not automatically. Again, no detector can do that perfectly, but that's kind of the ideal, you know? The Max 360 is going to do a better job of that. It now has a lot of the same era or, you know, features of the V1, like the arrows, um, some of the muting stuff I talked about. There's additional alert stuff that I haven't covered, just, you know, I'm not going to cover everything, but just kind of the basics, like, yeah, they've copied a lot of the same features here and brought it over to the Max 360 in a much easier to use package. You just put it on your windshield, plug it in, and it does a great job out of the box. And I think, honestly, for most people, especially if you're new, this is probably going to be a better package. Um, if you really like technology and tweaking stuff, the V1, I think, is going to be a, is a better package as well. So that's really what it comes down to. Like the lockouts here are a little bit safer. Um, not a huge deal. It's just kind of something to be aware of. But depending on where you drive, that may or may not be a big deal. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like there's a lot of nuances like that, right? So this guy is going to be kind of your easier to use plug and play package, which kind of does everything for you, everything in the kitchen sink. Like it's got all the bells and whistles, whereas this guy doesn't. And it requires a bunch of extra stuff in order to get um, a lot of the features that you've got here built into the Max 360. So um, I like both of them. I was debating, you know, like which one should I use more often? Should I return the 360? And I think I'm going to wind up keeping it because not because it can do things that the V1 can't, but because it's, for me, it's just easier to grab one detector. Like I take this kind of stuff out of my car all the time and I bring it inside and sometimes I may forget to bring uh, the detector or the phone mount or I didn't charge the phone or the power cable. Like I may forget one part and I'm like, oh man, now I can't use my radar detector because I forgot one of the things. It's like, I actually forgot my phone mount today and I'm like, oh man, I can't actually hang this anymore. I have to put it down somewhere. And fortunately I had some battery life so I could still use it, but this detector, you just kind of plug it in and it works, you know? So I like that. Um, oh, I guess one other thing, speaking of which I forgot to bring it up earlier, with respect to the mounts, you can see this guy has a lot more of a gap between the top of the suction cup and the detector, whereas the V1, it's uh, a much smaller thing. This is important for when you have the detector actually mounted high by your rear view mirror, which is where I actually run my detectors and it's the recommended location. The reason that's a big deal is because the detector um, sits up higher and more flush 
with uh, the top of the car and so it doesn't actually block my uh, view in the rear view mirror nearly as much or out the front of the windshield. Because it sits higher, I can actually see underneath it better and I got a better view of the road ahead. This guy, because it hangs down, it actually hangs down to my visibility, blocks a little bit more of the road. And because um, the way the detector actually connects at the very back of the detector versus hanging down in the middle, and because it's just a physically larger detector, it sticks farther forward towards me and um, it's actually closer to the rear view mirror and it blocks a little bit more of my rear visibility as well so I have to kind of move it and finagle it and get it in just the right sweet spot to where it's blocking the least amount of my visibility and the least amount of my rear view mirror access. So I do need to fine tune it a little bit. It's not a huge deal but just kind of something to be aware of. The size also has a little bit of a difference. It makes a difference there. So anyways, there you go. There's a look at uh, kind of my take on the differences between the two detectors. They're actually very similar if you have them paired with Yavi 1. As a standalone option with factory defaults, this guy is going to blow away. I mean, you're going to get so many more features. It does a better job. It has much better false alert filtering, um, all that kind of stuff, but it's also more expensive if you pair uh, the V1 with the Avi 1. And again, watch my videos. I've got tutorials on how to use it, the main features uh, for both of these detectors, how to set them up, how to get everything going. It's really not that big of a deal. I got videos and, you know, information on all of it. So video description, just check there. But anyways, both of them are great. They kind of have different intentions depending on what you're looking for. If you want something plug and play or if you want more fine-tuned control. Do you want to drive an automatic car or do you want to drive a manual? Do you want the control or do you want the detector to do it for you? That's actually what a lot of this stuff kind of boils down to. Yes, you'll find some differences in terms of performance, laser sensitivity, radar detection sensitivity. Is it like monumentally different? No. Are they a little bit different? Yeah. Sometimes a custom swept V1 will edge out a Max 360 generally speaking. Um, Laser detection, you know, again, the V1 is going to be a better laser detector, but it falses more. The V1 doesn't do a lot of the stuff that the 360 does, but you can get those features if you pair it with a phone and set everything up. So you can do a lot of the same stuff with both options. It's not like they're light years apart, you know, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to compare them is because they're so similar. They do a lot of the same stuff. So it all boils down to if you want the more automatic experience or if you want more of the control. Uh, I like both. It comes down to your personal preferences. So there you go. I uh, hope that's been helpful. I know we've covered quite a bit. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comment area below. Um, other than that, yeah, awesome. Pick which one you want. Uh, I'll have, again, look in the video description for more information, links, where to buy, uh, tutorials, all that kind of stuff will be down there. So awesome. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.